Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,276. If we want to focus and apply our focus, we can do or launch ourselves into any type of automotive or other significant activity on the planet. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah! Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from beautiful Gastonia, North Carolina, Mark Moskowitz. Hey, Mark, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Let's drop the green flag, my friend. (laughs) All right, sounds like fun. Mark Masovitz, MD, is a retired surgeon, a racer, a car collector. He's the director and curator of the Museum of Automobile History, manages the estate of renowned automotive artist Carlo Demand. I'd like to meet him. Serves on the board of directors of Carolina Motorsports Park and is vice chairman of the board of directors of the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America. He's a frequent contributor to multiple motoring publications. Dr. Mosowitz is a member of International Chief Judge Advisory Group and has been privileged to judge Concor events, oh my goodness, around the world at Boca Raton, La Jolla, where I'll be in April, enjoying the show down there, Santa Fe, Arizona, Greenwich, Hershey, The Elegance, Radnor Hunt, Cobble Beach, Hilton Head, I'm out of here everywhere, Dusseldorf, Hockey Heights, Zout Grand Prix, Monticello Raceway, and Delhi, India. Oh my gosh, you're having fun. Mark has served as chief judge uh, for the Race Car Concours at Monticello Raceway, the Trump Charlotte Concours, whoo, and the Miami Concours. This guy gets around. So Mark, I've told our listeners just a little bit about a very exciting life that you're leading. Take a moment, share a little more before I jump into the questions about your career and a very obvious passion for cars. I think you've used up all the time. Have I? We're done. Yeah, well, that was quite an intro. But my goodness, I wanted to give a a kind of outline here for people because you're involved in so many ways and people think a retirement is sitting on a rocking chair on a porch. I don't think so. Not for you. Well, you know, when I was working, my working life as a surgeon, it was very, very busy and I could not concentrate on the automotive things I wanted to. I got to drive a few open top vehicles and I raced somewhat and did a little bit of volunteering. But As my retirement opened up, well, all of a sudden, there was a smorgasbord of automotive activities, and and all of a sudden, I became a glutton. I would would eat everything I I saw. I had the shiny penny syndrome, and and, uh, um, and it hasn't left me. No, I think it's great what you're involved in, and it's so important when you retire to stay busy. I always say my father retired. He got even more busy, and he was a very busy architect as it is, but he just filled his life with things. I love the fact that at one point he just threw his TV away. He said, so many of my friends retire and they sit around and watch TV all day. Those things are death boxes. Get out and enjoy. And that's what you're doing, contributing, being a part of events, which is absolutely fantastic. And we're going to learn a lot more about that as we continue through your journey. But first, I want you to share a mantra or a success quote, something that's important to you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah, so Mark, take the wheel. Well, I, I say there, 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 there are two. One is no, no bounds. That is, you know, we are all capable individuals. If we want to focus and apply our focus, we can do or launch ourselves into any type of automotive or other significant activity on the planet. You can join a, a political party. You can you can uh, judge at a race at a, at a concord. Let me tell you, the people around me are infinitely more skilled and have infinite more experience in the automotive world. But, you know, if you work and you try hard, you can insinuate yourself into some great situations. So no, no bounds. And uh, the I other love one it. is, I love it. You can't help the hand you're dealt, but you can affect how you play it. So whatever the situation is, however bad, there's a way out. There's a way to deal with it. And I believe that we will be known by how we deal with those things. Absolutely. And I'm going to add to that. When in need, reach out to those around you who can help because most people are very happy to help. A lot of people are a little nervous about asking for that help. But you know, in the car world, we're all buddies. And I'll tell you, I can pick up my phone today and call hundreds of different people and ask for advice and thought, and they'll take the time to do it. 
Would you have you found the same thing? Well, I, you know, I, I think that's question number seven. But anyway, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, actually, you ask later on or you asked me when we were talking about this, uh, you know, what do you use as a reference? What do you go to? And obviously, uh, we all use Wikipedia. But the truth of the matter is, if you're out there, if you're doing things, you build up a huge, huge group or a wall of friends. And basically, if I wanted to know something about Delage, or Delahaye, I've got my friend in Wisconsin to call. If I want to call somebody about British cars, I've got others to call. If I want to call racers, there there have been a number I've I've gotten involved with. It's and everybody is so receptive. It's just truly amazing. It's a great hobby. It is absolutely. Well, let's talk about a story that instigated your personal passion for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew I'm a car guy? Well, you know, there are a couple, but I'll tell you, when I was very young and much before I could drive a car, I lived on a, on a farm in western Massachusetts. And so, uh, you know, we're out of the city, so you can do about what you want. And the people across the street had the Great Barrington Racing Association. And these were a group not of just mechanics, but they were professionals. They were doctors. They were lawyers. And they had found a way to make stock car racing profitable. They would build dirt track stock cars and race at Lebanon Valley Speedway, which on Saturday nights had a purse of five hundred dollars to win. Nineteen sixty three, we're talking about, and on Sunday that's night, good money. <laughs> a, a Sunday night, an open competition, a thousand to two thousand dollars to win. Now every night, I'd hear that engine rev up till very late hours. I was drawn to it like a magnet. About all I could really do is scrape some insulation across the, the, from the inside of a car or maybe carry some parts, but I felt I was involved and I was having a great time. And of course, you know, then we're, we live there and, and we are less than 20 miles from, uh, from Lime, Rock, Lime Rock, less than 20 miles from Lotus East. I mean, it is a real car center. I had a great time. Yeah, sounds like fun. You know, there's another piece to this is if there's a kid on your street that loves cars and you're into cars, invite them over, show them your car, let them sit in it, take them for a ride, take them to a car show, take them to a race, get them involved. You may spark some energy there like your neighbor did for you that lasts a lifetime. Wise words. And and I would say, if you look at the people who are pushing our hobby, they're saying the same things. Yeah, absolutely. Especially Concours events with these old cars. I've been taking my my son to Pebble Beach, uh, he's 25 now. He started going when he was about seven or eight years old. So uh, he's even got to ride in, in onto the lawn in some people's cars that he's met out there in the old polo field when they were detailing, getting the cars ready. He went up and talked to him and said, hey, you want to ride in? I think the first one was a Jaguar D-Type. And I'm like, I haven't even been able to ride into the lawn at Pebble. So how'd you pull that off, kiddo? Because, Dad, it's what you told me. Just go and talk to people. Ask them about their cars. And they'll tell you a lot of stuff. So the way to do it. Most collectors nowadays realize this importance in in their cars. They'll sit kids down on the seats of their cars. So let them steer the car and and enjoy the car and sample the car. I I, I really think the hobby is opening up to that. Yeah, it's wonderful. Let's take a look at some of the many roads you've driven down. Talk about a big challenge or a big failure. And the reason I bring this up is not so much to drum up old dreary thoughts, but more so to inspire others that there are learning lessons in these situations and there's ways out of them. So kind of walk us through one of those in your life and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career, your business, and your life. My challenges were much more in my profession than they were in the car world. Remember, it's fun for me. You know, know, nobody dies at a car show, I I like to say. Well, hopefully not. No, that would be a bad thing. And so, you know, I'll tell you more a life lesson that was gained in in the car world. And I first started racing legends when they came out. Maybe I went to the second or third race. It was located in Charlotte. They were built by uh, Humpy Wheeler and Elliot Forbes Robinson, and it caught on very quickly. And I had chassis number 17. They were certainly still being developed. And uh, uh, my engine was a Kawasaki. Uh, At that point, it was open. Anybody could have any engine. And I quickly uh, lunched that Kawasaki engine and needed a replacement. And I looked around, and, and one of my neighbors built and raced motorcycles. And he convinced me nothing is better than the Suzuki GSXR. I got one, plopped it Ooh. right in there, and oh my God, I was fast. And on the 300 the <laughs> plus feet straightaways at Charlotte Motor Speedway, I could gain two car lengths on people. It was absolutely wow. amazing. But 
I couldn't quite make my car turn left well. I didn't have those skills. <laughs> and so the guy who yeah. was building the fastest cars there came up to me and said, you know, I, you know your, your car's really fast. I really want to work on your car. And um, I, I, I said, well, I really like to learn it myself. I want to experiment. I want to do things and things like that. Should have taken the help. I probably lagged a year or two by not taking his help. I probably missed a lot of great races and great successes that I would have had. So if there's an expert out there and he's proven himself, avail yourself of expertise. And I think that's a life lesson. A lot of people have very special skills. They're worth the money for it. They're worth the time for it. And you can't bust your way through everything as quickly as a specialist can help you. Yeah, well said. When somebody puts their hands out and offers you something, grab that hand and take it, uh, uh, most definitely. And, you know, the other one comes to mind, my mom used to teach me, and probably your mom taught you, is we are the culmination of the people we surround ourselves with. So surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, because you can learn an awful lot, versus someone that's dumber than you, and so so that you shine. Uh, you're not going to learn much from that person for sure. Racing legends. Now, that is a very cool uh, part of racing. Explain to our listeners who might not understand what legends racing is, what that's all about. What What is it? Legends cars are literally the most popular form of racing in the world in terms of the numbers of cars sold. I believe it approximates 7,000 now. They started back, wow. as, as I said, in the late 80s, early 90s at Charlotte Motor Speedway. They are five-eighths the size of a cup car. They have about a 70-inch wheelbase. And at this point, this, this, the, the, the formula is very standardized. We're using Yamaha engines up until very recently. Uh, they're standard four-cylinder 1250 cc's. They've now come up with a newer Yamaha three-cylinder engine when it's water-cooled, and uh, that will be the formula. When you think about it, virtually everybody who is, well, not everybody, but most everybody who's in at the top of NASCAR today has been on that Charlotte track turning left, and I've been on the track simultaneously with, leave with everybody from Joey Logano to uh, Kyle Busch to uh, uh, Kenny Schrader to Dick Trickle at one point, Jeff Gordon, all of these guys I've been privileged to be on the track with because at some point or another, they had their hands in a legend car. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, man, the talk about having fun. I'm trying to remember who it was that quoted that famous, I got halfway through the turn and ran out of talent when you're talking about learning how to turn left there. Uh, I don't know if it was A.J. Foyt or somebody. I've got a listener who will probably email me in and tell me who said that. But, uh, yeah, I've used that phrase a couple times on the racetrack and uh, and in, in some other places in my life. Yeah, I got halfway through that experience and ran out of talent. <laughs> well, my experiences with A.J. Foyt suggest that he's never said that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, sorry, AJ. I want to put those words in your mouth, especially not you. No, uh, he he would rough me up a little bit. I think so. Won uh, a couple days well, five hundreds and maybe four indies. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. He's been there, done that. Well, let's have a little bit of fun and talk okay. about your very first special vehicle, first vehicle that had a great meaning for you, and and maybe share a memory you have about that ride. There is no question about it. It was a Datsun two thousand. Okay, and, a, and again, people don't know what a Datsun 2000 is. It is a roadster that was built by Datsun before the 240C. As a matter of fact, it was the sports, the sports car that immediately preceded that. It had a buckboard ride, but it had a very sprightly 135 horsepower engine with dual SUs, really just fast. You could up it with a, with a Solexes and a cam to 150 horsepower. And at that same time, Bob Sharp, on the East Coast and BRE, Brock Racing Enterprises, on the West Coast had adopted Datsuns as their platform. They 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 would come to the races with with gigantic tow uh, you know uh, uh, trailer trucks you know four cars yeah. and them, you know just like Bob Tullius did and 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 so Datsuns were glorious and let me tell you it was fast. Yes, I top ended an EJAG on the Massachusetts Turnpike one night. It was just amazing. I don't wow. do this at home, you know, <laughs> No, no, no. Don't listen to the doctor's advice in this case. Uh, definitely don't. But, you know, that car, I think they were made between 61 and 70. And the guy across the street when I was growing up down in Southern California had one. I remember it was kind of a off yellow color. And he'd give me rides in that thing. Of course, sunny Southern California every day is spectacular, right? But I always loved the looks of that. It just had a had a very unique look. And there was a local car show here. 
last summer here in Gig Harbor where there's a whole row of them. I've never seen. There must have been 20 of them. Like, I know there was 20 of them left here uh, in Gig Harbor. What fun. Ah, marvelous car. It, did, it didn't. It's only problem. The reason it left was I was in school in Boston and I could never get a battery in it strong enough to turn it over in the winter. I had to put a dipstick on a on on an extension cord in the oil in order to start it every morning. So you know, oh my gosh! <laughs> and so that would make the oil warm enough, and so even with a new battery, I could turn it over. So anyway, that it, it became impractical. That's hilarious. I love it. Well, how about Seller's Remorse? Is there a vehicle you've let go that you really wish you still had? I've been happy with everything I've sold. It's been time to move on to something more fun or a different experience every time. Now, the ones that I didn't buy are the killers. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple Millions of, <laughs> of great cars that were just sitting there easily, and, and one that just will tear your soul up was sometime in the late 80s i did a that was it was a friday afternoon and i had operated on a lady for hemorrhoids as a matter of fact it was the end of the day the last case and so i got was able to sit with her husband and talk a little bit about it and he was obviously a car guy and he said well i sell ferraris and he showed up with two 12-cylinder ferrari convertibles from the 60s that he wanted fifty thousand for the pair of them Okay. For the pair. For the pair. And so he just said, well, I really like you to have a Ferrari. And he, he gave me a 308 GTS for the for, for the weekend. And, you know, I went all over North Carolina. And I was hooked, yeah. but I was practical. Bad to be practical. Yeah. Bad yeah. To be practical. Well, we all, we all make those practical choices at certain times in our lives. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Missed opportunities. Well, you know, you can't look back. They were what they were. And at the time, uh, you were in the right place. And you made the right decision for that moment. Maybe not for the future. Not but, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some stock stock opportunities way back when we all wish we'd invested in. We could buy any Ferrari we want today. So that's okay. Well, let's move on from that. I want you to share your exciting life. I mean, you go everywhere. You're having so much fun. You're all over the place. I'd love for you to share with our listeners. What has you excited and fired up? today about this new year here? Oh, boy. I mean, there, there are too many things, so stop me when I get old. I just came back from attending the uh, induction ceremony of the Motorsports Hall of Fame. The Motorsports Hall of Fame originated in Detroit about 31 years ago. We were there for a quarter of a century. We didn't really have the the number of people going through it that we were satisfied with the people at Daytona Joey Chitwood specifically gave the search committee an, an opportunity down there they gave us our own space they helped us along continue to help us along and now 125,000 people go through the Motorsports Hall of Fame every year wow so and wow. and last on Monday and Tuesday and th- th- it's now spaced our big event is spaced to follow immediately follow Bill Warner's Amelia Island, between the, the the Grand Prix down there in St. Petersburg, drag races on the other end, Sebring, et cetera, et cetera. So it's it's well placed. We had the number of motorsports luminaries who would sit and spend their time there were people like Tony Stewart, who was inducted by Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Dario Franchitti was ever present for a couple days. Uh, he was uh, he was inducted by Scott Dixon. Even Linda Vaughn was there being inducted for an at-large member by Don the Snake Prudhomme. And, and, and you know, we had the head of Formula One that addressed us. So you, you're able to get, you know, the, the truth of the matter is every single boyhood hero I've gotten to meet. So it's been, been pretty cool. Um, and so that's an exciting organization. We continue to grow. We grow in stature. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of it. And of course, the judging is great. I mean, the people you meet who've dedicated themselves to a certain mark, or they become successful enough to be able to afford to indulge in the hobby at the top level is has been pretty cool. I was on my way back from, from Daytona. A collector who lives in Savannah invited me to stay at his house and walk through his collection. Those kinds of opportunities have been afforded me and that uh, I never would have gotten anywhere else. I've developed great friendships. It's it, and, and it's ongoing. It really is. I mean, the, the, this car show business is really kind of fun. And, and, and as I said before, you can't take it too seriously. Nobody dies at a car show. Yeah, absolutely. I think the key here for you listeners is get involved and you can get involved in a very small way in your local community. Even if you help out the Saturday morning cars and coffee, 
or you can get involved in Concord events. I mean, there's so many opportunities to do things. It's just getting off the couch, out of the house, out there and being a part of it contributing time, and you never know where it may lead. Uh, You look at Mark's life, it could take you all over the world. So absolutely brilliant. Well, Mark, up next is the last lap. Before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Hey, fellow automotive enthusiasts, you know I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products since 1975. That's right, all the way back to my high school days. Want to keep your vehicle's exterior and interior looking new? It's easy with a Covercraft car cover. A car cover is the best way to keep your vehicle looking great for years to come. Car covers protect your paint from fallout, birds, dust, rain, insects, and pollen. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. I use my Covercraft car covers every single day. Right now, you can get 10% off all Covercraft custom car covers or their ready-fit car covers. Plus, they offer you over 15 quality fabrics to choose from. Their spring sale is from April 15th through June 16th, 2019. Order direct at Covercraft.com and tell the Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. Hey, Mark Green here from the Cars Yeah podcast. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? That's right. Cars Yeah is now on MAV TV. I visit some of the past Cars Yeah guests and take you along for the ride. Go to mavtv.com to learn more where you can enjoy Cars Yeah TV. MAV TV is also available on DirecTV, Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through mavtv.com online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, Mark, we are back. And I have a very introspective question for you today. I'm going to be a psychologist. Have you sit on my couch and I'm going to ask you a question here, okay? If you woke up tomorrow and you were manifested into a vehicle, you'd actually turn into a car or truck or motorcycle, maybe your skateboard, I don't know. What would Mark be and why? Well, I'd like to think it'd be a Lotus because I would be thin and very functional. But I think that ship has passed, to tell you the truth. Okay. That <laughs> ship has sailed. So I, I guess, you know, I, I, I think the epitome of, of their designs are either a, a Pagani Zonda Roadster or Bugatti Type 55. These are cars that were incredibly functional, incredibly fast, yet people took time to make them an object of art, an object of beauty. And of course, we all want to be an object of beauty. Absolutely. I like that. Very, very nicely said. Very nice. You passed that part of the test, but you know, being a physician, I knew you'd be fine. Yeah. As he wipes some perspiration from his brow, that one always throws people off sometimes a little bit. Well, we are entering the last lap. You've been to many races. You know what this means. The white flag's out. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of that Pagani throttle. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? When you buy a car, try to buy one that's restored. Ah, you know, I just had this comment. I, I have a lot of people that email me with questions all the time. Some very bizarre questions. And this guy sent me this long, I mean, he wrote a whole book about this car he wants to restore and all this stuff. And I just answered, go find one someone else dumped all their money into. The best one you can afford. I Don't go through this process. Agree totally. <laughs> yeah. The best one you can afford is exactly the right question. And, and as we said before, don't forget to ask a specialist to help you vet it. Yeah. You know, that's a great comment. I just finished shooting another episode of the Cars Yacht TV show. At John Wilhoyt's shop in Long Beach, he restores beautiful old Porsche 356s and, and old Porsche 911s and 912s. And, you know, if, if, you, if you don't want to go through the process or you can't afford hiring John to restore a car for you, he's always got cars for sale. He knows about cars. Um, so call restorers and say, hey, I'm looking for this. Do you know one? Because people that have a lot of cars, they kind of rifle through them. They get a little bored or tired. They let them go. They move on to the other one. So let, let the mega rich guys restore all the great cars. 
and you can pick up the pieces behind because there's some really nice ones out there. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? I know no brick walls. Ah, no, no bounds. I think I heard that earlier in our talk. Yeah, just uh, reach high, reach far, set the bar high, and just say, I can do that. Absolutely, I can do it. Now, how about a resource? There are incredible resources these days. You work in and amongst many of them. Is there one in particular you'd like to share? I'm going to share with you a, a few. Number one, don't forget my column at conceptcars.com, driving impressions if you want to learn about new cars. In all seriousness, I I, uh, I think I emphasized it before. The group of friends, the group of acquaintances you make in this hobby are, are wide open resources, and the vast majority can be counted on for the truth. Yeah, yeah, it's the people. It really is. It always comes back to the people. Every time I go to a big Concours event, it's almost more of a family reunion than it is a car show because you just you you run into so many people that you know. Uh, if I could wave my magic wand and arrange for you to sit down and have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? Yeah, you're down to two again. Can't make up my mind. Number one, certainly Jim Jim Clark. Okay perhaps the fastest race driver in the world, uh, certainly revered by many, still a grace and elegance under pressure continuously, uh, drove some of the most dangerous cars in the world, always with a smile on his face, always seemed to react well. I just, uh, uh, he's the epitome of, of what we want to be, I think, uh, at least that, that's the appearance. The other is Dan Gurney, and Dan Gurney, because he had so many successes and he had so many misses, yet went on. And, and he, this, this man was basically with so many Formula One teams that the next year became world champion. And that's, that's one. But the things that he accomplished, he's only one of two men that have driven an American car to victory in Formula One. And only one of five Americans who've won a Formula One race. What an interesting guy. And, you know, think of it. He brought the rear engine revolution to Indianapolis. I know. Incredible guy. I, I'm so um enthralled with his life and i tried and tried before we lost him to get him on this show he was not feeling well not doing well and had to cancel a few appointments he had with me and eventually we lost him of course before i got him on the show uh just an incredible guy when you go back and look at his life a, a lot of people didn't realize how many things he got involved with i mean he had, had his hands in everything yeah magnificent man uh legacy for sure and then, of course jimmy clark man uh, what a guy. My first vintage race car was a Lotus 18 Formula Junior. That's the first open wheel car Jimmy drove. So I always kind of put my gloves on and try to channel Jimmy somehow <laughs> so that I could think, what would he do? Of course, nowhere anywhere near the skill level that gentleman had. But I always felt a little sliver of him kind of enter me when I went out there and drove that Lotus 18. I'm going backwards for one second. I, I said he was the man who brought uh, the rear engine car to Indianapolis. He was not. Of course, that was Brabham. But he was responsible for getting Ford involved in getting the car to victory lane. So I just, just wanted to correct that. Lest you get Well, good, because I, I want all those, those uh, intelligent cars, you know, listeners emailing me, say, hey, Mark made a little mistake here. And I'm like, well, sorry. Gee whiz, cut him some slack. But no, he didn't make a mistake. He just corrected himself. So we're good to go here, Mark. How about a book? Is there a book that you'd like to share with our listeners that you enjoyed? Again, we'll give you a couple. One is the the one that uh, the last lecture by Paulson, a, a man facing his uh, death, uh, a man who's a virtual reality expert, popular professor, and uh, the thoughts that he puts in there are things that we can all live by. And that, that, that that's I, I recommend it to anybody and everybody if you ever get a chance. And, and we're talking about car books. You need a car book or two. I think probably. What enchanted me with with the era was a book called The Cruel Sport by Robert Daly. And I don't know if you've had the opportunity. It's, it's mostly pictures, but it really talks about the simplicity and the dangers of racing in the late 50s and the 60s. Love yeah, that book. Yeah, magnificent book. Yeah, it's great. It sits on my shelf. But the last lecture, I'm going to get my hands on that. That sounds very interesting. I've not read that book, so. You encouraged me to uh, add another one to my repertoire. I can learn a little bit from that. I, I have no doubt. Sounds fantastic. I'll remind our listeners that you can find all these great resources Mark's been so kind to share with us today on his very own Cars yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Mark Moskowitz, M-O-S-K-O-W-I-T-Z, and that page will pop right up. And there's a great place on the Cars yeah website called Guest Recommended Books where there's 
Way over a thousand books listed there now. Uh, just go check on that uh, little menu bar under resources on the Car Show website. And I made it really easy for you. Quick clicks to buy. So check it out. All right, Mark, we are up to the checkered flag, something you've seen many times in your life. But this last question can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. doesn't matter who owns it or where it is. I'm going to acquire it, park it in your garage. But there's a couple rules to this little game to make it a little more interesting. One is, it's the only collector car you can have. So you need to choose wisely. Secondly, no garage queens or dust collectors here. I want you to drive it. I want you to use it. And last but not least, the kicker, you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with. So that little trick is off the table. What can I buy you today, Mark? Well, I'm still stuck in that Bugatti Type 55. I mean, racing engine, uh, uh, the absolute styling by a styling master, open top, of course, or, or most of them were actually limited number in, in sheer, sheer beauty in motion. Well, you picked a gorgeous car. I mean, it's just, uh, and Bugatti, have you been? I'm sure you've probably been to the Champ Museum in France. I have not. All the Bugattis? I have not. Oh, we got to go. I'm, I got to take I'm ready. you there. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, you you got to go because it's absolutely brilliant. I haven't been there in a long time. I, I'm sure it's changed a lot since I was there. I was there back in 1996. Uh, I was there in Europe for business and I had to be close. And I went, I got to go over here and check this out. It's incredible. But the Type 55, that's a really stunning car. And I've seen a lot of them on lawns at Pebble Beach. And I've always thought, man, what is that like to drive? Have you ever had the pleasure of driving or, or being driven in one of those? Being driven, yes. Driving, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. You're one step further than me. I've never been able to sit in the jump seat there. But uh, what was your impression? Did it live up to what you you thought it would be like? Um, you know, uh, by the time Bugatti gets to me, somebody has worked on it well, and it, it starts and, and runs runs phenomenally. So, uh, you know, and, and the fact that so many are still alive, perhaps more than existed at, at first, uh, is this a tribute Maybe, to the car? Yeah. Uh, I had a guest on the show where they build uh, replicas down in South America. You may have heard per those sense. cars per saying. Yeah. And uh, I just was uh, at a, a car show that I got invited to MC at the Classic Auto Show. And I stayed in the hotel, same hotel as Wayne Carini. And we were chatting one evening uh, after the show. And he was talking about he went and looked at those and drove them. And he said, I'm going to buy one of these for my grandson. And now his grandson, I think, is three years old. So maybe it might be for Wayne a little bit before he hands it off to his grandson. But he said, that car, you can take any original part for that car and put it on this car. And they're all interchangeable. And I've seen some of those cars. In fact, I want to go do a Cars Yet TV show at that facility because it's it's just brilliant, but Bugatti, Tori Bugatti, that guy, yeah, he was an artisan. He was a creator. He did some neat stuff. Well, listen, I'll get busy on this. Uh, this isn't going to be cheap for me, is it? I think these things have a little couple zeros past the numbers part with the decimal point way to the right, but that's okay. For you, Mark, I think we need to put you in the driver's seat. I think you'd get out and have some fun with this thing. You have taken me on an awesome ride today, and our, our listeners, I want to thank you for sharing your incredible journey. Incredible life that you've created uh, after uh, retiring from being a surgeon. And thanks for your service as being a surgeon and helping so many people in your career. It's wonderful. Could you offer us a parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you roll off into the sunset in that Bugatti Type 55? Before I do, Mark, I, I want to thank you. I mean, if I look down the list of people who've been on your show, I'm relatively humbled. I'm, I'm absolutely humbled to to be on it. <laughs> well, it's, it's really cool, and, and 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 you know, I can go back and get certain insights that that you are able to pull out of people that are, you know, are. I, you know, I hate to be so. Uh, uh, they're life lessons, and I, I, I congratulate you. Well, on thank that. you. That's really cool. Thanks. Um, thanks. Well, I appreciate it. Um, parting thoughts. Uh, again, uh, no, no obstacles. If you want it, it's worth working for, and try to work for it. And I, I, I just think that we are all empowered, and and uh, that's uh, the way you should approach life. If there's something you want before you go, the time is short. Go get it. The time is short indeed. And especially when you work in medicine, you see a lot of wonderful things and you see yeah. some things that are pretty tough on people that, that take uh, lives away far too early. So yeah, get out there. No, no bounds. Listen to Mark. Uh, and I appreciate your kind words. Yeah, my goal here is inspiring automotive enthusiasts. That's my mantra. And you definitely are an inspiring automotive enthusiast. Is there a way for people to follow along with what you're doing in your world? 
Do you have a website or anything? Are you active on social media? Oh, my gosh. Uh, several places. One, of course, I encourage everybody to go to MSHF.com, the Motorsports Hall of Fame, uh, and, okay. of course, uh, ConceptCars.com, Driving Impressions, and my own Facebook page, Mark Moskowitz, which basically only deals with car stuff, only deals with the, the great cars that I come across, the great people in the car world that I come across. Um, you probably won't find uh, anything uh, – other than that. Well, I do the same thing. We we'll leave all the politics and goofiness off the plate and just uh, stick with cars here and have fun with cars and uh, enjoy cars. So listeners, again, you can find everything Mark has shared on the show notes page. Follow along with what this guy's doing. Be inspired by him. Get out there today. Do something. No, no bounds. Have fun being around cars and car people. Mark, thanks for being so generous today with your time your expertise, and for sharing your many wonderful experiences with me and the Cars Yow listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. This has been great. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.